In this tutorial, we're going to talk about object instances. Instancing gives you the ability to have duplicates of an object that have some properties of being individual objects while retaining some linked features. For instance, if you want to make geometry changes to one and have all of those objects be updated. We're specifically going to talk about how you can apply different textures to individual instances. This is something that isn't apparent in the user interface, but it's a powerful way of texturing objects. These packages contain a toothbrush and it's got some labeling on the outside, but they're instances of the same object. And that gives us control. If I need to make a design change to say the cap, I can edit that geometry and that'll propagate through all of the instances. But by default, the way that Blender applies a texture does not allow you to apply independent textures to those instances. And that's what we're gonna talk about because it's totally not obvious in the user interface. So we're gonna come over here and take a look at a very simple file where I've got a single sphere with the red material applied to it. We're gonna talk about this area of the material system because it's a little bit unclear what's going on in some cases. So the first thing that I wanna do is come over to object here and we're gonna initially invoke duplicate objects. I'm going to press the X key, move that over and then press Shift R to give us four total if I want to make a change, let's say I want the second one here to be blue, I can come over to the user interface, which is accessed by coming down to material properties, and I can change this icon to say new material, and it's going to give us a red dot zero zero one, which means it's duplicated the material. So it's that material is no longer linked to the other materials. So I'm going to name this, I'm going to double click this, and I will call this blue. Let's come down here and change this so it actually is blue. You can see that propagates to only that object. But if I come over here now and I go into edit mode for the original sphere, I'm going to press the S key and then the Z key so I can scale that only along the Z axis. You can see that change at the geometry level is only affecting that initial one. And that is because that duplicate objects function created brand new geometry that's unlinked to the other objects. So let's come over here and remove these and let's come back to the object menu and let's do a duplicate linked function. Now I'm going to press the X key, Shift R, Shift R. And then when I come over here and I want that one to be blue, but I want the other ones to be red, I can come over here and now assign that to blue. Now it's changed all the other objects to blue and that's not what we want to happen. But on the upside is that when I press the tab key on the original one, press the S key to scale, they all follow suit. We want that behavior, but we want the ability to have this one be an independent color. So I'm going to come back over here and switch everything to red. Here's what you have to do. You have to come over here to this little icon in the user interface that says link materials to the object's data and it says data. But I want to change this to be object and you're going to notice that this disappears in the first slot but the object remains red which is a little weird. So now I can come over here and change this to become blue and it becomes independently blue. But if I come back to this original object tab to go into edit mode, if I press the S key and then Z, now all of them remain linked at a geometry editing level. So this is what we want to do. So the way that this works out is that this default icon of data versus object means it's applying the material at a low level in a way that's similar to the way that the object keeps track of other low-level data for the object. For instance, a UV map or normals, which are assigned and relate to the vertex level of the geometry, it's applying the material at this lower level. But when you switch this over to this object level, then it simply applies the material on top of the object at a higher level, as if it were just, say, a wrapping that's put around the object. So object level data is data that is, for instance, tr transform data. It's position, it's rotation, it's scale that's being applied in a global sense to the object. And this may seem kind of weird, but this is how Blender works. 
So I'm just going to obliterate this blue object and I'm just going to completely duplicate linked the original sphere and put it back in its place so that we're kind of working with pristine data right there. So if we come over here and I add the, a plus, this is going to add a new material slot. And what I'd like it to do is be on top. Now we're going to take this and we're going to change it into object mode. And then I'm going to assign that to be a blue material. But even though it's sitting on top, it's not having any effect. So the way the material slots work is they relate any given slot to assigned polygons on the object. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to press the tab key. I'll come over here into face mode and I'm going to double click access just that loop of polygons and with the top blue slot activated I will assign that to those polygons and so you can see what's happened is that because we assigned that to object mode it only assigned the blue to this first one but the assignment at a slot level affects all instances and that's why those changed the way they were so we could independently make each of these a different band color, but that slot function happens at an object data level. So for instance, if I came over here, let me press the tab key, and I came to this slot, I'm going to change it to be at the object level. I'm going to click new, and in this one, I'm going to call this yellow. And then I can come down here, we'll give that a yellow color. And there we go. But the key issue here is that when you have two slots in place, all instances get two slots. And each of those slots gets an assignment. So if I didn't want the slot to be visible there, then I could simply come over here and let's change that to be at the object level. Then I could sign that to red and we could do the same thing over here. I'm going to assign that to be at the object level and then I could assign that to be red. When we come over here and take a look at the start file, we can see that I have organized in a collection system the toothbrush case, and I've got three general objects in here. We've got another collection with the toothbrush itself. So if I expand that out, we can see the toothbrush. And then I've got all of these, which are the bristles, within another sub-collection. These two objects have unchanging materials, and so we can just make an instance of this collection into the scene. And then I've got cap, and then I've got case. So these are the two objects that are going to have instances of these, but they're going to need to have their own separate material. So the first thing that we need to do is create a structure that's going to allow us to duplicate this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is have us notice that this is created at the center of our universe by having the object modeled with its Y and its X at zero, and the cursor is at the world origin also. And that's very important for creating instances of collections. So I'm going to come over here first off, select Scene Collection, and then we're going to add an object that's an empty, and I want it to be arrows. We're going to change that to a smaller size so it's visible, because I've got this model to scale. And we're going to call this Case Blue. By default, I already have a blue material created and assigned to both the cap and the case. And you can see it's been assigned automatically in that data level. So that's the default. Now I'm going to come down here and we're going to also take a look. I'm going to bring this up, the timeline, and I'm going to change it so that it is the asset browser. And I've also put these down here as assets just so that we can kind of see them easily and then apply them. So the next thing that I'm going to do is let's create an instance of the toothbrush and the bristles. So I'm going to right click and we're going to do an instance to scene. It's dropped into the same hierarchy that it was originally. So we're going to take this up here to the main scene collection. And then I'm going to move it holding the shift key, add it inside of that case blue. And there we go. So that's dropped inside. You can change the axis to something smaller because it's enormous. The next thing we're going to do is take cap and case. So we're going to come over to object and we're going to do a duplicate linked. As soon as you move the mouse, it's going to attempt to move them, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to press the escape key and then I'm going to move these up into the main scene collection 
and then I'm going to start moving them, hold the shift key and move them into case blue. So we have essentially now recreated this hierarchy, but now we have the ability to control these independently from a shading standpoint. Okay, so let's come back up here and take note that I want to take the cap plastic blue and I want that to be an object mode. Let's come down to case. I think I, I want this to make sure and be an object mode also, but see how it, it disappeared. <laughs> so let's come back down here. We'll go to case plastic blue at the object level. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to duplicate this. Right click and do a select hierarchy. And then we're going to come over to object and we're going to do a duplicate linked X key and then shift R and then shift R to repeat that two more times. And there we go. So if we come over now and we take a look at this, in fact, I'm going to move these so they're more centered to the view area. Now I've got the original up here, so I'm going to turn this off. Then we can turn on the interactive renderer and we can see that. So let's zoom in a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to come over here and let's rename these empties. So I want the first one to be green. The next one will be red. And the next one will be yellow. Okay, so let's let's go to green. Let's select cap and we need to come in and we need to create the actual materials that are going to be assigned to these. So if we come down here to cap, we've only got the two materials and we can just create them. And I'm going to change this to become a new material. So now we can come over here and I can rename this to be green and then just come down here, change the green color. And there we go, that's independent now. Now what I need to do is I need to transfer this color to the case material, which has a different setup. So I'm gonna hover over the swatch, press Command C or Control C on the PC, and then I can come down to case, plastic blue, and we're gonna create a new material for it. Let's name this to green. Let's expand out the first principled BSDF where the color is here, hover over the base color, and then paste in that color. So what we could do is we could come up here, let's say you wanted to organize these here in the assets. I could right click over this and I could say mark as asset, and I could do the same for the cap, and I could say mark as asset, and those would appear so you could reutilize them. The other way that we could do this would be to create a duplicate, and this I'm going to call red, and I could come down here, create a red color, copy that by hovering over it, come down to case, new material, we'll call this red, paste that there, but this is in green. So that's okay. I'm first going to come over here and mark this as an asset, and I'm going to mark this material as an asset. I'm going to switch this back over to the correct one, so it should be cap green. The case should be case green. And then for red, I'm going to expand this out here, select the cap, and I'm going to come over and grab this and drop it. And then we'll do the same thing for the case, come down to the case material, drop it, and it becomes independent. Again, this is all thanks to this being in object mode, not the default data mode. Okay, so we'll do the final one over here. I can't select it because <laughs> there's a hidden object right there, which is annoying. Okay, come to here. This will become yellow. Create a yellow color, hover over that, copy it, case, yellow, 
hover over the color, paste that in, and there we go. In this case, I'm also going to do a mark as asset so it appears, and a mark as asset, just so that I have those as a repository down there in case I want to reutilize them. And there you go. This is how you would set up a shape and instance. But the critical thing here is let's come back into the front view is that if I decide that I need to make a change to one of these, let's say I want to change this piece of data right here, I'm going to marquee around the bottom. I need to make this part different. I can do that on one and they all change but they all have their own independent colors. So that's how you do that. That is how you create independent materials for instances in Blender.